Hello and welcome to A Tinge of Ginge. Now this video is going to be following on from a video I've literally just recorded. Um, if you're into snakes and you know anything about the hurricane gene with raw pythons then please go check that last video that I've just posted. It would mean the world to me if you could actually help me out and actually figure out what's in those snakes. But today the main part of this video is hopefully getting this tank finished, painted and ready to be filled up and start cycling. Um, I do have a little unboxing to do as well because I've got a few new toys that are actually going to go in the bottom of this tank. Um, so yeah, it's, it, hopefully this is probably going to be the second from last video and, and we can get everything sorted. So the sump's basically finished. Today I'm going to be painting the cabinet. Um, but yeah, apart from that, there's not a lot else to do. Um, oh no, we do have the uh, insulation foam for the, uh, the, the stand as well. Um, I managed to get some sound cancelling foam delivered and I'm going to be putting that inside the cabinet just to dampen the noise down a bit. So that's done. I've got the return pump. I've got, you're going to see the new present I've got shortly. I did sneak a little peek of it on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me, go over to a tinge of ginger on Instagram and follow me on there so you get little highlights before I post the videos. And yeah, it will be finally time to get everything together, set up and put in the room ready to start cycling. So this is my nano skimmer that I've ordered, made by Kent Marine. Um, I went for this one just because it's it's very small, it, it fits in there perfectly. Um, some of the reviews weren't great on it, but other reviews are absolutely brilliant. And for what it needs to do, like I've said before, this isn't going to be a highly stocked tank. This is mainly going to be um, quite a lot of nice expensive corals. So I'm, I am going to be doing lots of water change on this, but I just want something that's just going to help out that little bit extra with the uh, with the actual filtration. So this is the skimmer I've gone with. Um, you can see it's, it is very small and it's got the dimensions of the skimmer on there. So it's 215 millimeters high. It's 95 millimeters in width. And you can see in depth, it's 55 millimeters. So from front to back. So it's not, I'm hoping, I don't know what that's for. I've not actually opened this and had a look at it yet, um, but I'm dying to, so I'm just going to open it up now. I can't wait any longer. Okay. So it's fairly well packed, I guess. Um, I would have liked it to have, what is this? It's quite plasticky, so I would have liked it to be in a sort of slightly bigger box with some some polystyrene maybe around just protect it but I'm um, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, also in the box that's it. also in the box you get the little little leaflet you normally know, get insulation operating guide. Now because I'm a man I'm not gonna bother reading that I don't need that. Um just gonna get straight into it. Okay so looks pretty decent. Um, so yeah, the reviews I saw on this online were that it, it did a good job, but it produces quite a wet skin. Um, whether that's because people don't actually know how to use these sorts of skimmers or not, I'm not entirely sure, so I'm guessing that must turn, so that must be the valve for the, yeah, that must be the airflow. So if you turn that, you see there's like a little bit of sponge in there. So I'm guessing that's where the air gets sucked into, it goes all the way down there. And then water must get drawn in through here, mixes, and that sends it up. And I'm guessing this little bit here controls the outflow, maybe? Yeah, there's a little sponge in there as well. So I reckon that controls the outflow, so the water that comes up into there, all the excess water flows back out of this. So, yeah, I'm happy with that so far. It's quite, quite a decent build. Feels quite sturdy. Can't see any cracks. Um, Yes, yeah, so I think it's arrived all in one piece. I like that idea. If you see in that, this is, I'm guessing, yeah. So that can adjust the height of what you have the skimmer in the tank, quite like that. Because of the, the, the sump that I've got, um, I am gonna have to get this just to the right level because it's got yeah, the min maximum line there. So I'm hoping the baffles I've got in my sump will fit this. I will get this put into the sump quickly just to show you. Um, but I just wanted to give you an overview of this. So that clips onto there. I'm not quite sure what this bit does. That's actually not attached to anything. Uh, maybe that goes into there. Oh, okay. Does that turn that? Okay, I don't know why you need that to turn that because 
that is quite easy to turn without that. I don't need a tool to do it. Maybe if it's in a tight spot and you can't get to it, maybe that's just an accessory to get to it. So that's quite a nice thought. Uh, that hose clips onto there. So this is the collection cup. So the lid comes off, it's got a little hole there, that's good. Decent size collection cup, I'm quite happy with that. Does that come off? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, okay. So yeah, that comes off there, that's quite nice, I like that. It's quite a snug fit as well. It's gonna be nice to take this out and clean it. Um, I was thinking of maybe modifying this because they said the skin gets quite wet on this. Um, I don't want to risk this overflowing. So when I was looking online, I weren't entirely sure how to do it, but I was now looking at it, maybe on this side of the collection cup here, I might drill a little hole at the bottom and then just have a small hose that comes out off of there and then goes into like a sort of collection collection bottle. Well, I might do it a little bit higher up just so if it does get too high, then it's just got somewhere to go. So if I don't check it for a day or two, then at least I haven't got that risk of it overflowing and, and causing all sorts of mess in, in, the, uh, in the sump area. So yeah, no, I like that, that's cool. And then that's inside and I'm guessing, how do I get this filter out? There's foam, I don't know if you can see, there's foam inside there. Um, okay. Oh, this is where I start to break stuff because I, I love taking stuff apart and seeing how it works and then I can never put it back together. Oh, okay. And, oh, ah, okay. Nice. So you can actually get in there and listen this pump. Yeah, this pump can... Can it come out? Ooh. I don't want to pull on it too much just in case it doesn't, but I'm, I'm guessing this... Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing this would come out. It, it looks like it wants, so I'm not gonna force it. Um, I will have a little look at the instructions with this, I think. Uh, actually, oh, there you go, yeah, yeah, it's suctioned onto that little bit there. So yeah, you can take this out if you need to ever clean it or whatever. That's decent, I like that. That's really cool, and that's the impeller there, you can see. Really nice, I like that. Okay, you know, it feels quite solid to me, it's the entire build. It's nice, it's, it's smoked grey as well, I quite like that, it's going to go with the theme of the tank, so yeah, I'm really really happy with that. I've got the foam there, so you can take that and clean it if you need to. Brilliant. Hopefully it goes back together the same way I took it apart. So, uh, did it go that way or that way? I don't think it really matters, I think it went that way. So that goes on to there, and that, oh, nice little satisfying click. That goes back onto there and clicks onto there, brilliant. And that wire goes up there, yeah. Well, I suppose you could put it the other side as well. Whichever you fancy by looks it, but it looks like it'll go that side. Okay, and the collection cup just goes on. That's quite nice, that's a snug fit as well, that collection cup, so that goes on there pretty decent there and then obviously we've got the lid. Oh yeah, and let's get this back a bit. So yeah, this bit's definitely gonna come in handy so I can actually adjust it. Um, I'm hoping this isn't gonna get in the way of the, the actual stand, but I'm sure I can find out a way to get around that. So I'm guessing that then goes in there. Like that. Brilliant. Okay, yeah, I'm really happy with that. I think that's spot on. Um, I'm gonna get the sump out quickly and give you a quick look at that and uh, actually see what it looks like in the sump. So there you can see that's the, the sump that I've got. Um, got the three individual chambers. So this one here is gonna be the filter sock. So the water's gonna come in here. It's gonna come over this small bit of baffle here into this main section. And this is where I'm actually gonna have the protein skimmer now. It's gonna sit on this back side, just so I can see it. I could probably sit on this front, but if there's anything else I wanna put in this section, it's gonna be hassle to try and get around it because it's quite compact. So, so this skimmer is gonna be on the back side. Um, I might have some um, media in here just to help actually absorb anything, any nitrates, anything like in the water. Um, this section here is just a bubble trap, so the water's gonna come over this section and go through here, and then it's gonna come out from under here, then the return pump's gonna be in here. So let's just get this fitted to the tank and see how it looks. Okay, so looking at it, you can see that sort of, that fits in there perfectly. It's got a nice low profile, so it doesn't stick up much above the tank, but where this min and max line is, I'm gonna to have to move this down so it's level with this baffle. Um, 
I think I've got enough space for it just so that uh, obviously the water is going to go over this this center section is going to be level with this baffle along here so it needs to be in line with that in between that min max line there so I'm just going to adjust it down a bit to make sure it fits in okay and there we go there it is sat in the sump it, it fits in there perfectly um, you can see I've got oodles of room in there there's so much I'm putting here I can put some carbon in there I could probably put some biological material in there just to try and media in there just to try and um, help uh, filter out anything that I don't want in there in the tank basically um, but yeah I'm really really happy with that considering how I sort of it, this has all been put together by myself so none of these parts have all been made to go together I'm literally just chucking all mismatch of things together just to try and get this to work but you remember that that level line I was talking about so you can see that's the baffle here on the right and you can see it's just level it's literally it's not really showing on the camera but it's just in between that max minimum level there um, once I fill it up with water obviously I'll have a better idea of, of the level but you can see at this level what I meant about baffles so you can see this first baffle here got that little cutout section just there so the water's going to trickle over there and then you can see that that bit that I've cut out is just slightly higher than this baffle on the right there so the water level is going to be slightly lower and then if this middle section here between these two baffles ever gets clogged up this baffle at the far end is the same height as that little cutout bit there so the water can just flow over there into the last section and you can see there that gap underneath that's where the water is going to flow under just to trap any bubbles that might go back into the tank but yeah I'm really really happy with the way that that skimmer sits in there that's going to be perfect um, I am a little bit worried about noise obviously little skimmers like this they it looks fairly well built but there's probably going to be some vibration some rattling noise and I'm going to be doing a few things to this just to try and quiet that down you can see on the back there the suction cups hold it in place perfectly and then that clip just goes over the top and secures it in place so really really happy with the way it looks I don't think this is going to get in the way of the stand because there's quite a lot of distance between that and the stand so I think that's going to be fine um, but yeah, I do have a little a little trick up my sleeve just to try and quieten this down just in case it does make any noise But I'm not gonna know until I fill it up and start running it. So that's the sump almost completed So I couldn't wait. I just wanted to put everything in there just to have a little look So this is where the filter sock is gonna go and um, I'm gonna make like a little ledge That's gonna go along all of those sides for that to actually slot into and click into so it can't move But that's where the filter sock is gonna be and you can see it's just slightly higher than that baffle so the water will go through there and then filter into that main chamber obviously the skimmer i've just showed you and then there we've got the return pump which is going to go straight back into the tank um yeah this it's looking amazing i'm i'm really really happy with the way it's turned out it it, it basically looks exactly the same as my red sea reefer 350 i've got upstairs um that's got three chambers kind of the same a little, little bit different in certain areas but the whole idea was I was basing this micro tank build off of my big tank upstairs so yeah I think this is pretty much spot on to what I'm, I'm dealing with upstairs so I just can't wait to get it finished and running okay so I've got all of that in place um, I don't want to touch it too much and mess around with it because it is gluing especially this bit here that comes along that bit was very very fiddly to try and get in place and I, I didn't want to use tape just because it's just going to be a load of mess to try and sort it out so that bit there is sitting in in the front just to stop the actual sock from sliding forward then we've got these three ridges here which the edge of this sock here will sit on just like that so they're going to cure and that's basically all the work i'll have to do to the sump um yeah do need to find some foam to go in between them two baffles but apart from that that's all basically done okay so it's been a few days um I've done a few bits this tank it's been quite busy i've been working so i've not had a lot of time to actually put into this build but I'm going to show you the progress I've made so far now some of it's gone well some of it's not gone well but I have got a way of fixing that which I'm going to quickly do now um, hopefully it turns out okay but once this is done basically I'm going to be able to get this set up and ready to start cycling now I'm not going to cycle it straight away with salt water um, I'm going to fill up with just fresh water I'm going to cycle it for about a week doing a water change every couple of days just to try and get any toxins or anything out of the water that might be in there and then once that's cycled throughout the week if everything's working fine then we're going to get this filled up with salt water and actually get it cycling properly so i'm going to quickly show you now what i've done which i haven't updated you on yet so you can see there the tank's still 
as it is. Um, I don't really need to do any more work to this. This is basically done, finished, apart from I just need to put the sticky plastic on the side there to hide that. And then this, that's it for this tank here. There's nothing else I need to do. All the, the sand that I glued to that polystyrene's done. And you can see all that's basically set and good to go. So I don't need to touch any of that. The sump, as you can see, it's, it's all set up, basically ready to go. So the uh, last time I did anything, I was showing you the, the filter sock section. So you can see there, so you can see there I've got the little ridges that the sock sits on. On the front there, I've just got that little stopper, um, just because when I put the sock in, it would actually move forward and, and come off of here and fall off that back ledge. So I've just put that little stopper on there so that when I actually put the sock on, it sits nice and snug, doesn't fall off, it's nice and firm. So that's just going to catch all the water really well and this sock isn't going to move. So you can see I've put that sock, you can see there it's slightly higher than the little drop down on the baffle there. So the water goes through there, has to go through the sock and then into the next section. The skimmer I've showed you already, that's all sort of set up ready to go. And I've got the return pump as well. So that's the sump good to go. Um, and then also you were seeing that I was painting the cabinet. Now from distance, I think the cabinet looks all right. You can see some of the imperfections. Um, after using the spray paint, uh, it did actually rain. I left this outside and it must have been outside for a good 10 minutes while it was raining. And from where it's rained, the surface of this has just gone nasty. You can see where I'm trying to focus. There's all bits. I don't know how close to that I can focus on, but it's gone bubbly, it's gone ripply. And yeah, same for the, the front panel as well, just here. You can see it's all, yeah, it's just, it just doesn't look good. It's just not, it's just not the finish that I wanted on it. So what I've done is I've gone out and I've put some sticky back plastic for this. So I'm gonna take this outside. I'm gonna sand it down with some sandpaper, make it nice and smooth. And I'm literally, I'm just gonna wrap this with a sticky back plastic. And I think that's gonna give me the effect I want. Um, yeah, apart from that, I'm, I'm not going to attempt to paint this again because it just means I have to order more paint and I think the, the colour that I've got for the spray paint is a bit too glossy for my liking. I want it to be a little bit more matte black than that, um, just so that it does match the other cabinet I've got in my room. So yeah, I'm going to get this sanded down and then I'm going to start wrapping this with that sticky back plastic. Okay, so I've got all this scraped down. You can see it's a hell of a lot smoother. There's none of those horrible bumpy bits or anything like that. And it's all scratched up, but that, that really doesn't matter because that's going to just make it nice and even. So when I put the plastic on, it just has something decent to adhere to. So I'm going to do the main cabinet. I'm not going to be wrapping the bottom because that's not important. I'm not going to be wrapping the top either. Or actually the other way around. So this is the bottom. I'm not going to be wrapping that because there's nothing to wrap. This is the top. That's going to be hidden. So I'm not going to wrap that. I'm literally just going to do the three sides and the front panel. So let's get into it. Hopefully it turns out all right. And there we go, we're done. So you can see that's, that just looks a hundred times better. Um, it looks quite light now, just I've got the light coming from outside shining on it, but yeah, that just looks a million times better. I'm, I'm so happy with the way that's turned out. So the next stage I wanna do is I wanna get the sound cancelling foam on the inside of this. This is the foam that I've got. Um, I've got 16 sheets of this, so I think that's gonna be plenty for what I need. Uh, I'm a little worried that it's going to be too thick. Um, it should be fine. Um, if not, it, it does squish down there. And if not, I can always just cut this down to size. But yeah, that is going to be going on the inside of the cabinet. So that's the next stage.
So as you can see, I finally got all the foam attached on the inside and it, it looks quite cool actually, but I'm really, really happy with the way that it all turned out. Um, I finally stuck it to the front panel as well, which is gonna be the front door for me to access the actual main part. And I did have to modify that slightly. Before I done that, I put some double-sided tape on the top just to put a layer of foam on for the tank to sit on. And then after that, you can see on that front lid, I just cut all those tips off because when I actually closed the lid, it did actually press against the tank there. So I just had to cut them all down slightly just to make sure it did fit in there. Now, I've only got a few bits to do. So for the sides, I made some stencils. Obviously, I wanted to black them out and you can see I put them onto the plastic, cut them out and they came out absolutely fantastic. And I did that for both sides. I'm really, really happy with the way that's turned out. Okay, so I'm going to end the video there. It's getting quite late and I do want to try and get this video edited and uploaded tonight. So that's where the tank stands at me. You can see I've got all the insulating foam on the inside to try and cancel the noise down. The stand is finally wrapped and looks really good. I've got the stickers on the side as well and obviously the door is done as well. So the last thing to do with this really is I need to get the magnets for the door so that, that just sticks on with magnets. I just need to attach the pipes at the back which go into the sump and then once that's done, I can get this filled up, get it in place and get it running. I'll then be filling it with salt water, putting the piece of rock in that's gonna go on the end and then we will start cycling the tank which is gonna be probably one of the most boring parts but at least it's on its way to go. And once I'm sort of a couple of weeks in, I might actually buy a small fish to put in there just to try and speed up that process of just getting the ammonia and the nitrate cycling. So that's where it stands at the minute. The next video is gonna be me doing the plumbing, getting it all filled up and in place. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss this. That's probably gonna be the last video on this before it is set up and running and then hopefully once it's cycled i can give you sort of updates on how it's cycling how everything's looking in there and then we can look at actually start stocking the tank and getting stuff in there so the last thing i also need to add to this is the light the light i haven't ordered yet i just need to do a little bit more research before i decide what light i want to put on this um, but I'm, I'm pretty set in which light I want to go for. It is quite a lot of money, but I think for the coral I'm going to have in here, I need something that's going to be reliable and that's actually going to make them coral grow nice and strong. So that's going to be the next video. I hope you've enjoyed watching up to now. Make sure you do subscribe. 60% of my viewers who watch, my who watch the videos are not subscribed. So it really helped me out if you do click that subscribe button. That's all you need to do. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oh god, the dogs have heard something. Oh no. Please don't eat the squirrel. <laughs>